What's going on everyone, my name is Tom from Dread Labs and today we're going to talk about pricing your work. Dread Labs. So before we start the video, I just want to let you know that this video has been sponsored by Revelancer, an amazing freelance platform that reached out to me. I'll talk a little bit more about them later in the video. So in the community, some problem that I have been seeing for the last couple of years, and it's probably a problem that has been going on for a longer amount of time, is that a lot of freelancers, uh, whether you're a graphic designer, photographer or whatever, you're undervaluing or underpricing your work. So in this video, I wanted to give you guys a couple of tips on how I price my work. And that's because I see a lot of amazing freelancers out there, you know, basically pricing their work at a value that is very, very far below what they're actually worth. So yeah. If this is something you've been struggling with, you found the right video. So in this video, I will share five different tips on how to start pricing your work. So number one is start with your cost. Basically, how much does it cost to run your business? Start out by making a list of all of your monthly costs that you need to do in order to keep your business up and running, as well as staying alive. This is very important. So what I mean by this, this can be uh, the cost for your Adobe subscription, that can be the cost for your energy and your internet bills, maybe you rent out a desk or somewhere or you have an office space, and of course you need to make at least enough to cover all these costs. And other than that, of course, if you are a freelancer, you also need to be able to live. You need to be able to pay for your groceries and pay your own rent. Maybe you don't work from a separate office space, but you just work from home. That's also completely fine, but that means that you have to pay your rent of your own apartment or whatever with the cost of being a freelancer. So I'm gonna use a real world example here. And uh, this is essentially, well, most of the large costs that I have to make as a freelance designer. So of course, an Adobe CC subscription of 63 euros, Cinema 40 and Octane Renderer 70 euros. The office rent is 500 euros. The internet bill is 60 euros a month. I pay around 200 euros for groceries and food takeout and stuff like that every month. My part of the rent of my apartment is 400 euros. And to round it up to a nice number, uh, I just added in insurance for 7 euros. I think mine's a little bit more expensive. And most of these costs may vary, but uh, basically this is just to give you an example of what I mean. So in this case, my living costs or my like monthly costs in order to keep my business up and running are 1300 euros. So I need to make at least 1300 euros a month if I want to make it as a full-time freelance graphic designer. And of course, note that I say at least here because of course you also need money to, you know, do fun stuff, live, you know, do things that you want to do. Uh, or maybe you want to save up some money. Uh, let's add 700 to that so that we need to make at least 2000 euros a month, something around there uh, in order to make a respectable living. And before you start yelling at me in the comments when you convert this into your own currency if you're from another country, this is what I think is a pretty reasonable income here in the Netherlands. And depending on like inflation and currency conversion and everything like that, uh, this might be different in your country, so it will be the best to do this for yourself with your own numbers to have it make more sense. All right, so this was tip number one or you know step number one, I guess. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is use a set form of pricing. So don't use hourly costs. And I'm going to explain to you why. Let's do some math here with the previous example. We need to make 2,000 euros every month, right? Let's say that we have to do four commissions each month for logo designs or album cover designs or whatever. That means that we have to make at least 500 euro for a set commission or for a set album artwork, if that makes sense. A normal working week here in the Netherlands is about 40 hours, so that means that we have 10 hours to finish each commission. So if we convert this back into an hourly rate, we have 12 euro 50 as an hourly rate. And I don't know about this in your country, but in the Netherlands, this is considered like the very bare minimum of a freelancer that can charge this. This is usually what a freelancing student charges. But here comes the cool part. As your skills get better and you will be able to do your work faster, uh, you will find out that not all of these commissions will have to take you 10 hours each. For example, when I started doing the album covers that I do now uh, it took me like six hours and eventually it took me only four hours basically I want to make 2,000 euros a month with four commissions so all of these commissions have to bring up 500 euros basically that means that I have a week to finish each commission as well if I get quicker at this for example I finish it in three working days instead of two I will still get paid the same amount of money but I can use those two days to do other stuff to generate more income for example I can set up a passive income by making an asset web store or maybe I can you know try to generate new leads by reaching out to record labels uh, stuff like that so you basically have some time left another thing you can do here is try to learn animation for example in order to make you be able to make your album covers animated uh, this will of course generate more income because you can charge more because you can make the project larger yourself and your client doesn't have to outsource the animation on the album cover if that makes sense. And the cool part about this is that both you and your client win in this case. 
so the client doesn't have any unexpected costs and he does get his album cover faster while you don't have to have your price just because you're working more efficiently. So tip number three when pricing your work is make solid agreements up front. When using this method it's very important that you and the client have a clear view of what's going on here. Basically, you need to tell the client what deliverables they will get and in what time frame, so there aren't any unexpected waiting times or any deliverables that doesn't come out because you thought that you could charge extra for that. And the client also has to have a very clear perspective of what it will cost. Uh, and the cool thing about using a set fee is that you can also include making a mood board and emailing back and forth within this set fee. And the reason I'm talking about mood boards here is because I use mood boards mainly to show my clients what it is exactly that I'm going to make for them so that they have a clear image of what their album cover will be looking like and this is just for myself so uh, that I have a clear view as well without having to start to design I guess um, but also if I deliver the actual album cover and it does look like the mood board and the client says I wanted to have something completely different that doesn't look like this at all you can just say but we agreed upon using this because we talked about the mood board and you agreed that the look should be like this so if this happens, you can always say you said that you were agreeing with what it looked like in the mood board and uh, you can just charge extra if they want a completely different album cover afterwards anyway. Uh, this also comes in handy when, you know, talking about deliverables, like I said earlier. Basically, when I do an album cover, I charge a set fee, but sometimes my clients want to have like Twitter banners and then Facebook banners and SoundCloud banners and stuff like that as well. Uh, some people even want animations so they can share it on their Instagram with like a music preview and stuff like that. And when that happens, I charge extra upfront because I already know that I'm gonna have to be making that. And if the client asks you to do that halfway through, you can just say, well, we haven't really discussed that yet, so we can charge an extra set fee for delivering some social media assets together with the album cover as well. So just to sum this all up, basically it's very important that you and the client both know what you're getting into, what the damages will be, and that you both can agree on what the outcome of this project will actually be, both for you as a designer or the freelancer and the client as well. So number four here is avoid the race to the bottom. Learn no when people try to undercut your price. Learn to say no when people try to undercut your prices. If the client says, I can get the same type of album cover for just half of your price, just say okay and let them go to that other designer because it's not worth your time. The more you start lowering your prices, the more clients you will encounter that just want, don't want to pay enough for you in order to make a living. And you'll end up drowning yourself in work with less money. And this is actually kind of a nice segue into today's sponsor, Revelancer. So Revelancer is a freelance platform that you can use as a freelancer to get jobs or as a client in order to find freelancers. So basically Revelancer is a platform that's kind of similar to Fiverr. But if you know me, you know that I absolutely hate Fiverr because it's the epitome of a racing to the bottom as a freelancer. I've seen people doing album covers for less than 20 euros on Fiverr. So in our example, this designer who's charging 20 euros for an album cover would have to make 100 album covers a month in order to just keep his head above the water. So when Revelancer reached out to me, this was my main concern if I wanted to promote them on our platform. Luckily, Revelancer has three methods to counter this. Number one is that Revelancer is entirely quality added. That means that you cannot undercut everyone else by, you know, using lower prices on their platform. It's also a smaller platform, so there's less competition to begin with, but they also encourage you to just charge your own prices. On top of that, Revelancer also doesn't charge any commission fees. So basically, if you're a freelancer, you get what you charge. Of course, this also helps their users to keep their prices fair. And it goes the other way around as well. So if you're a client, you can also set a budget for a certain project upfront. So if you see a project on Revelancer as a freelancer and you think, okay, this price is maybe a little bit too low for my standards, you can also just skip it upfront instead of having to do all of the hassle and finding out what the actual budget of the client is. Another thing about Revelancer is that they aren't like a mediator in any way. So for example, if you find a client through Revelancer and you feel more comfortable doing things on a Zoom meeting, you're not forced at all to keep the chatting and you know the communicating on Revelancer. So to sum that all up, Revelancer is a very transparent platform for freelancers and clients who need like a special project done, where as a client you can put your budget up front fully transparent on their website. And as a freelancer, you can just charge the prices that you would normally charge without, you know, racing down to the bottom and lowering your prices to undercut each other. So if you are interested in joining Revelancer, you can click on the link down in the description and this will also get you access to three months of Revelancer Plus for free. Revelancer Plus contains a lot of perks for freelancers, including unlimited project request bits, adding social links to your profile, unlocking data insights to help secure more jobs and more. So yeah, big shout out to Revelancer for sponsoring this video and making me be able to give you guys more videos for free. All right, finally, I have some notes that I want to give you, uh, you know, just some things to keep in mind when, you know, trying to 
find your own custom price list. It is definitely okay to up your prices every now and then. Especially if you notice you're getting more and more commissions. This way you will still be just working the 40 hours instead of, you know, burning yourself out. And you will be left with only the higher paying clients anyway. There's also a giant cheat sheet online containing a lot of different prices, incomes, uh, whether it's freelance or, you know, in-house uh, by all kinds of designers and creative people. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, it's very, very nice to, you know, see if there's a reference near your country or your region. And I think it's definitely worth scrolling through. And the last step I want to say is if you don't know how long it will take you to do a certain project, basically, you know, do the calculations in your head and then double that. This is a trick that I learned from John Cantino. And every time I'm happy that I did it because there's always stuff that gets in the way or things that take longer than expected. So it's always better to double the amount of hours you think you're going to use to do a certain thing. Otherwise, it's going to take longer and you're going to end up with unexpected delays. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope you found this useful. And if there's any other things that you as a freelancer or as a beginner, uh, you know, have a question or uh, some remarks about, leave them down in the comments so you can learn from each other. And if you want to talk a little bit further, you can also join us on Discord. The Dreadlabs Discord link will be in the description down below. Before we actually end of the video, I just want to give a huge shout out to all of my patrons. Thanks to my patrons, I'm actually able to do Dreadlabs full time and making me be able to give you guys a new video every week for free. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, both music and graphic design, a 15% discount in my asset web store, as well as an exclusive Discord role as Dreadlabs Insider. If you go one tier up, you also get access to exclusive tutorial videos, as well as even more project files. So yeah, huge shout out to my patrons. If you actually don't have the money to support the channel, but you want to do something, you can always leave a like and a subscribe and a comment down below if you haven't already. That also really supports the channel and the channel. So with all of that out of the way, this is Tom from Red Labs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.